Hi, in this video we're going through the terabyte in GTA 5 Online. Hi and welcome back, my name's Dan and I'm an old grumpy gamer. Grand Theft Auto is a truly massive game. Between GTA 5 and the constant updates from Rockstar for GTA Online, there's no shortage of new content and interesting things to do. Join me then as we look at the terabyte in GTA 5 Online. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, we do how-to guides, news and giveaways. So consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay up to date. The terabyte is a command trailer based on the Mercedes Zetros Expedition. It's powered by what looks like a Phantom and it pulls hard and is pretty damn resilient. So why on earth would you want to purchase a terabyte? Well, there's a few key reasons. You get access to exclusive missions, so the trailer's operations center gives you access to a series of exclusive missions that pay reasonably well. A weapons workshop, so there's no need to head back to the bunker or the agency to restock your Mark II ammo. You can bring the workshop with you. It's a great hidey hole. This thing can tank up to 34 missiles or RPG rounds. If you need to seek refuge while you're on the run, there are are few places that are better. You can mod your Mark II Oppressor, so it allows you to store, restock, and modify your Mark II Oppressor, including adding weapons. You get access to drones, so with the right upgrade, you can also access drones and fly them more or less anywhere. No more having to worry about nano drone range. And a mini master control center, so similar to the arcade, the terabyte allows you to launch, steal, and resupply missions for all your GTA Online businesses. So let's talk budget. Now the terabyte is, well, mobile, so we don't need to worry about location. It's simply stored and modified in your nightclub. So that leaves us with the base price of 1,375,000. Next, we have some options for the rear cab, starting with the decor. Now, starting with the color scheme or tint as it's shown here, we have nine options to choose from with the base option included in the price, or you can pick the other options at a flat 105,000. Moving on to the interior decal, the blank slate is included in the price, or you can choose from one of the many, many other options options for around 127.5. Next up, let's take a look at the weapons and functional upgrades, starting with the turret station. This little add-on will set you back 297 grand and is an absolute monster. This lets you lock on to up to five targets at a time, really handy when the cops or SWAT is on you or you're dealing with a rival team. The drone station is next at 815,000, which will allow you to launch a drone from the back of the unit. It's only got limited range, but because your base can be moved, you can position yourself in a plumb spot, all while knowing you're more or less safe as houses. The drones come equipped with a stun gun and an explosive self-destruct. The weapons workshop is next. Now, if you have a bunker, you'll be able to upgrade some of your weapons to Mark II, and you'll also be able to restock ammo. This is one of the few times I'd recommend this upgrade, which will set you back $245,000. Finally, the specialized workshop at 495 grand. This is the only way you can mod, upgrade, or otherwise weaponize your Mark II oppressor. So if you own or intend buying an oppressor, this one is an absolute must. Now, because this is a vehicle, you also have the regular aftermarket options too. Armor, EMS upgrades, brakes, suspension, etc. They're all available at standard vehicle prices. So you can get away with a straight 1,375,000 for the terabyte itself in a pinch. But honestly, it's not going to do much of anything except give you access to mission. So really, the minimum layout you're after is terabyte itself, the turret station, and the specialized workshop, which comes in just shy of $2,170,000. However, and it is a big however, this thing comes with a pretty wild paywall in front of it. See, you can't just buy the terabyte, you need to unlock the terabyte. And to do that, you need to own an operational nightclub. And to do that, you need to be a VIP, motorcycle club president, or a CEO. So that means you'll need to spend at minimum an additional $200,000 on the Grand Chaparral Clubhouse, plus $1,080,000 on the Elysian Island nightclub plus upgrades. And with that in mind, you're looking at a minimum additional spend of $1,280,000 before you can unlock the terabyte. But even then, as we discussed in our nightclub guide, $3,875,000 is a better guide price for this one. But that also includes a few upgrades for the nightclub itself. So if you don't already own a motorcycle club or CEO's office and a nightclub, your actual out-of-pocket expense is more like $6,100,000 or 50 hours. Yeah, not bad, Rockstar. Not 
bad. So speaking of unlocks, the missions for the terabytes are paired to specific business types in a similar fashion to the nightclub warehouse. So you can launch client jobs straight out of the box. And these typically pay 30,000 a throw and are super quick with an oppressor or a sparrow. But will take a minute if you don't have something airborne and weaponized. Each of the missions has two distinct cooldowns too. You have a four minute timer before you can start a different mission or a 30 minute timer before you can repeat the same mission again. Oh, and some of the client jobs are locked behind having to have a specific number of people in your organization too. The other five mission types, air freight cargo, special cargo, vehicle cargo, gun running supplies, and biker supplies all relate to specific businesses you have elsewhere in the game. This setup allows you to essentially do supply runs for each, turning the terabyte into a mini master control station similar to the one you have in your arcade. So to confirm, you'd need to own a hangar along with an MC clubhouse or a CEO's office to unlock the air freight cargo missions, a CEO's office and at least one special cargo warehouse to unlock the special cargo panel, a CEO's office and a special vehicle warehouse to unlock the vehicle cargo option, a bunker as well as an MC clubhouse or a CEO's office to unlock the gun running supplies and finally any of the biker businesses along with an MC clubhouse to unlock the biker supplies options. Right, with the unlocks and expenses out of the way, what can you actually do with your terabyte? Well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, you can customize the terabyte itself, similar to the mule or any other truck. Just head to your nightclub, then to the terabyte garage and enter the front cab of the truck. Once you're in, check the top left of your screen for a prompt to modify the vehicle and you're good to go. You can call in the terabyte using your interaction menu. That's M on your keyboard, double squares on your Xbox or swipe on your PlayStation. Once you're there, head down to services, then terabyte and request terabyte. The terabyte itself will spawn in in one of a set number of specific locations nearby. It can be a bit of a trick, so make sure you have a vehicle ready to go as getting there on foot can take a moment or two. You can also call your oppressor in here too, should you feel the need. And once you've called that in, it will be set as your personal vehicle, which makes it really quick to grab if you're under pressure. Even better since the summer 2022 criminal enterprise updates too. On the transport side of things, you can drive your Mark II oppressor into the side if you need to. This is a great if you want to transport it from one end of the map to the other. I mean, it's older than getting there on the actual oppressor, but if you want to arrive in pristine condition, it's certainly a way at it. And while your oppressor's in the back, you can activate the vehicle workshop and customize it, including tweaking the decals, performance, and most importantly, weapons. If you've been grinding bunker research, you'll also have unlocked some upgrades for your weapons. Now, the weapons workshop allows you to upgrade eligible pieces to Mark II, increasing firepower, and opening up options for different ammo types. And also, one of the most fun things for free roam is the anti-griefing measures. It's better if you have at least one friend, but you can jump in the back and use a turret station to take out clowns. This one's really unusual too, as you can lock onto five individual targets at a time and then fire a full battery of homing missiles at them. This is brilliant if you're being tailed by a team of enemies or a couple of griefers, because you can take out multiple idiots in one go. Also, the missile lock is pretty damn good too, similar to the sparrow or the homing launcher. Next, as an additional fun little piece, when you're stationary and in the front cab, you can also scan other players. This neat little piece of kit, which comes stock, lets you grab some basic stats from other players when you're in free roam public lobbies, crew sessions, or invite only sessions. There's not a lot of use for it, but yeah, why not, eh? Finally, the last thing the terabyte can do is launch a specific set of missions that allow you to make money. Now, the typical payout is above the standard at $30,000 regardless of time. So assuming you're able to cycle through, say, for an hour, it can earn you upwards of 120 grand per hour pretty easily. On to some pro tips next. Now, first up, like most other businesses, if you've registered as some sort of manager, that's a CEO, VIP, or an MC president, the game assumes you're actively running your business, and that can leave your other businesses open to raids and attacks. If you're not actively working your business and you're not doing something that expressly requires you to be a CEO, VIP, or MC club president, then you should resign. This will significantly reduce the chance of having stock stolen or otherwise destroyed while you're not actively working your terabyte. Finally, pairing with a friend online who also owns a terabyte will dramatically increase your overall earnings. The trick is to go turnabout. So you register as a CEO or MC club president, invite your friend to your organization, then call your terabyte and start a client job. As soon as that's complete, resign. Then your friend does the same thing. They register as a CEO, president, or join their organization. They call it their terabyte and start a client job. By the time you've completed that job, your cooldown will have finished and you can start the cycle again. 
So is it worth it? Well, yeah. It's pretty good if you already have a nightclub and a MC club or a CEO's office. It's a good tanky boy and has some great kit. And for grinding, being able to upgrade your Mark II oppressor is super handy. If you've not already purchased a nightclub and you don't desperately need an oppressor, I wouldn't worry about it though. There's nothing it can do that can't be replicated in other properties or vehicles. So thanks for watching. Check out the video up top for another guide or the one down the bottom for some more old crumpy gamer goodness. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.